Hello everyone, my name is Ivan Skoli and today I'm going to show you how to use the option button. Or, as it is more commonly known as, the drop down button. Let's start by creating our new project here. The goal of this video is to teach you how to add items, add separators, remove them again, how to disable specific items inside the dropdown, how to change the item text on certain items, how to clear all the items, how to connect it with a signal so when you select an item something happens. What that is, it's really up to you. And how to keep track of them if they were object. So if you had, for example, custom classes that you wanted to associate with each item. And lastly, how to select an item from code. So let's start by creating our main scene here. I'm going to use the control node. I'm going to rename this main. I'm going to make sure to set the anchor points to the end on both the right and bottom. Scrolling down to find margin. Setting it to zero. Pressing control S to save and save. Okay, so we have our scene prepared somewhat now. So let's start by creating our drop down button. Let's find option button. There it is. Perfect. Okay, so first thing we're going to do is renaming this to something less confusing. Drop down. And let us start by creating a script in main. Create. And let's remove all the commenting and let's get ready to begin here. Okay, so how do we get our drop down? Well, there are several ways of doing it. This is the way I prefer. I will use the export, which expects a node path type named drop down path. Then I will use that drop down path to get the node on ready var drop down equal get node. And that's where I insert the path to the drop down. Let's enter path so we don't get any errors. And let's select main and select our drop down. Then, let's go back into the script and let's start by adding items. So let's create a function called add items. Let's remove pass and create the function. Let's start by creating four or five items here. And that is done by using the dropdown node dot add underscore item and then a string. I'm just gonna name it item1. Then I'm gonna copy and paste this a few times. Renaming this accordingly. And let's take a look here. No main scene has ever been defined. Would you like to select one? Yes, I would. There we go. Let's hit the play again. And now we have five items in our drop box. Now let me show you how to create a separator. So, drop down, add underscore separator. And this will simply add a separator after one. So we'll have a separated line. Now this separator takes up an ID, which means item 1 has an ID of 0, the separator has an ID of 1, which means item 2 has an ID of 2, and so on. Just something to keep in mind here. Okay, so how do I remove an item from this? Let's create another function here. Item. Let's name it remove item, and then let's insert an ID. So, let's just... Yeah, let's enter 1, which will remove our separator here. Let's create a function. Name the argument ID and let's use drop down dot remove underscore item and then insert ID into it, which is quite simple and straightforward. <laughs> so let's hit the play now, and if everything is expected, the separator will be gone. And so it is. So how do I disable an option? Let's say I had an option, but it wasn't unlocked yet, or m maybe it's inaccessible or even unfinished. So how do I prevent an item from working? Well. Let us create a new function called disable item. And let's insert an ID. Let's disable our first item, which is item 1 here. Let's copy that and create the function down here. Takes in an ID, which will be used to disable it using drop down dot set item underscore disabled. And then you have to insert the ID and a boolean to true. Let's hit play, and if everything works as expected, item 1 will no longer be selectable. You know what? Let's not use item 1. Let's use item 5, which will be 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. Hopefully, that's right. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> so now item 5 is no longer selectable. What if I wanted to change the text to item 5 and wanted to write disabled or something? Well, let's add another line here. 
let's use the drop down and use the set item text function and let's name it disabled let us not forget to use the id and hit play here perfect okay so what if i want to remove all items for some crazy crazy reason well let's clear all let's create our own function let's go all the way down add some nice commenting here clear all and the way we clear everything is by using clear <laughs> and that's that's all you need let's hit the play button and if everything works as expected there will be nothing in the list and it's all gone okay so that's how you clear it i'm gonna comment this so let us start by connecting this which means whenever i select something i want something to happen now what that something is is really up to you now in order to create a signal or rather a connection with our function you have two options one is to select the drop down itself find the node tab and select signals and then you find item underscore selected and double click it which will allow you to select the script that you want to add the connection with so if i were to hit press connect now it would create a new method called on drop down item selected and then take in an id but i will also show you the the method from code so so let's just start by creating our connection from within the code so set up connection let's use drop down dot connect which will connect the signal that drop down is going to run named item selected and this will trigger a method on ourself named on item changed actually selected there we go let's copy that let's go all the way down and create our own function called on item selected and let's not forget it takes in an id let us print the item name that has been selected and that is done by using drop down dot get item text and then you insert the id which will return the item text let's select item 4 and as you can see it prints the name of the item you can now do things when you select the item how do you keep track of the items now a method to keep track of the items is by creating an array so if you have let's say you have an array of objects like uh, fruit and inside fruit you have apple oranges and so on so let's create an array we have apple orange what else do we have apple orange mm, banana lemon so we have this array now if you were to have an array or a list containing more complex objects you can use the same method as i will demonstrate using this array let's just rename this fruit array i have commented add items because we are now going to add fruit items so whenever we select an item from the drop down we are going to use this array to get the current item that's selected so let's start by creating a function called add fruit items let's go all the way down here let's find that there it is let's adding fruit items to drop down so we have funk add fruit items so the way we're gonna add the fruit items to our drop down is by using a for so for item in the fruit array which means for each iteration we're gonna, we're gonna get the item or object from the fruit array so we're gonna append the name of that item to drop down on each run so this loops until it has reached the end of the fruit array so we have drop down dot add underscore item and then we just insert the item now because item is just a string in our case we don't have to use a function inside the item if this was a more complex object you could probably have a function like item dot get name and then you would append the drop down to be the name of the item but because it's not a complex object it's just an array and this is just a string we're just going to use this method so if i were to hit play now we are going to get fruits apple banana lemon what are we missing one i think we're missing one here hold on here apple where's orange oh yes we removed an item that's why let's remove that and let's hit play again so now we have fruits here how do we make sure we run a object when we click this currently we are just printing on the name from the drop down text itself which is not very helpful because we don't know what item it is 
Except we kind of do. Because we have an array right here and they are sharing the IDs. So fruit array ID 0 is an apple. And that is also the case for our dropdown because we are adding it in order. Which means I could just print the array using the same ID as the item selected. So let's use the fruit array. Let's insert our ID and let's hit play again. And let's select orange. And there it goes. Now, this would work perfectly if we were not to manipulate our dropdown. If you were to remove an object right now, if you were to remove orange, it would be all messed up. Basically, the IDs for each, for the dropdown rather, would change and wouldn't match our own object list. So how do we keep track of that? Well, that is why we have functions here. And don't just directly use remove item, because when we remove an item, not only are we going to remove the item from dropdown, we are also going to remove it from our array. So, that is done by just using fruit array dot remove and the same ID. So if I now were to uncomment our remove item here, let's hit play, let's select lemon, and it still seems to work. Now, let me un- let me comment this out, and you can see what would happen if we didn't were to do that. Let's select lemon! Oh no, it's banana, what's this? How about banana then? Why is banana orange? It doesn't make sense and it'll probably confuse you. So it is important to control when you add and remove items when you associate them with objects. Now, once again, this is not a complex object. You would have a complex object. It could be, you know, class 1. And in this class 1, you may, ha you may have a function called get name or get a uh, 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 description or something that you want to print out when you select something. And lastly, how do we select an item from a code? Well, currently, when I were to hit play, we have apple selected. But what if I don't want that? What if I want lemon to be selected from by default? Well, lemon is 0, 1, 2, 3. Well, let's just select a default item before we remove it though, otherwise it'll be all wrong. Select item, select item, then you hit ID, you know, select 1, 2, 3, create a function down here. Let's see here. We have, that is under fruit items here. So let's create it here. Funk. Select item. ID. And that is done by using the drop down. Shockingly enough. <laughs> select and then ID. Let's hit play. And now we have lemon selected by default from within the code. And it all works perfectly. Now one thing to keep in mind. There are also options in the experience. Inspector, you can set the default select button here. So if I were to select, ah, oh, shit, I can't. And there you have it. Thank you so much for watching this. I hope this was helpful to you. If it was, hit the like button, subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you in a future video. Bye bye.